Last year at reInvent, we announced that the HPC 7G was coming. This is a new HPC specific instance family built around the AWS Graviton 3E, which has a load of performance improvements that the HPC community is sure to love. Now the HPC 7G is the culmination of a couple of engineering programs we've had running here. The first is our program to build an ARM64 processor that's a really serious performance engine. This program also had some sustainability goals too, so the chip coming out of Annapurna for these machines is very, very fast, but also very low power consumption. So if you have sustainability goals of your own, it's worth taking a look just for that. Now the second engineering program is the one that's already produced a couple of other HPC instance families, the HPC 6A based on AMD processors and the HPC 6ID powered by Intel CPUs. This program is about driving out all of the last bits of unnecessary cost to get some instances priced just right for the HPC community while sacrificing nothing in performance. Now HPC 7G is the intersection of both of these programs. As the blog will tell you, the new HPC 7G is around 70% faster than its predecessors and almost three times better price performance. That's crazy. Now we set our HPC performance engineering team onto these new instances Let's hear from them about what they found and why it was so surprising. We've been testing it on a bunch of codes. Our favorite open source collection, so OpenFoam, Gromax, and Wharf. And then we've been working with partners to test it on Siemens SimCenter Star CCM, LS Dyna from Ansys, and somewhat excitingly, Ansys Fluent for CFD. Now that's actually, that's a big deal. Neil, you're the aerospace geek here. Mm -hmm. Fluent is like one of the most popular CFD codes in the world. This is really, it's coming out parade on Graviton. Uh, and this is one of those codes, a bit, bit like, um, or in the, in the same way that Siemens Sim Center Star CCM is, it's just one of those widely used across many sectors around the world. It's, it's quite hard to go into a company and not see one of those, those codes being, being used. So this is why it's so uh, such great news to see these big ISV codes um, actually really seeing the performance to port the code. It's not a small effort to port a very large code like that. But it's not a small effort to port it. It's also not a small effort. It's a long, ongoing effort to commit to maintaining it too. I can understand why a lot of these folks don't necessarily want to just jump to new processors straight. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Take, I mean, take some time. We don't want to go. We're not. You know, we're not going to spend today going into the nitty gritty of every one of these codes and showing you the same graph that goes from the bottom left to the top right of the screen that shows that they'll scale. Um, you know, I think everybody can actually go and read the blog if they want to see the, the blow by blow account of what we did there. There's a lot of bits of hardware and a lot of other systems and services involved in making all this stuff work. We've got the DDR5 mesh connected memory system inside these chips. That's a huge leap for, uh, I mean, especially as, uh, comparing to the last generation. If you look going from DDR4 to 5, like one and a half times more memory bandwidth on the same number of cores, that is something that you definitely see in a lot of codes. We've got a theoretical peak of 307 gigabytes a second in a single socket system. Where's that showing up in these benchmarks? Yeah, I think, I mean, the typical ones, of course, would be the CFD codes. I mean, if you look at like OpenFoam, for example, is basically more or less a stream benchmark uh, in, in some cases. But uh, I think it's more interesting now that we have the possibility to actually look into the ISV codes. And because those ISV codes have also been heavily optimized and are basically running at the memory uh, bandwidth that they can get. Open foam, we're seeing what? This is like, how much better? It's, I think it's between about 60 and 70%, which is pretty big from one, I mean, as Stephen was saying, this is on an ISO core basis. Sometimes, you know, performance improvements from generation to generation or instance to instance can be a bit confusing because one node has more cores or less cores or whatever. But this is, uh, you know, the same number of cores, 64 cores. So to jump that much in performance, that's actually a lot. I mean, that's a really big jump. Imagine that you, Boo, are paying for this role. Imagine that you are the designer designing mm -hmm. this, this car uh, or you're a customer, you know, flying whales. If you have to pay now currently $500 for your run, and you just have an option with a new instance of it now costing you $200, that is absolutely massive, isn't it? I mean, to save that yeah. much yeah. on the thing is, is huge. And the key thing is what you have to do. You go into your 
parallel cluster script and you literally change the line that says instance from, in this case, C6GN, you delete that line and you put 7G in. And I don't, I'm not exaggerating that. That is no, actually... It really is that simple of a change. The fact that we got a third more vector performance, you know, compared to Graviton 3, right? So compared to what is already a pretty fast chip, um, we've now got a third more, more vector performance out of it. Where is that going to show up in these benchmarks? Typically, vector so, performance is something you need for codes that do something like FFTW, which is in Gromax, for example. Um, Wharf also is pretty much optimized and has uh, a lot of uh, vector code in there. So that's where you would see that. That's actually a good segue. I mean, we are, you know, for Gromax, uh, this is the bench rib. I think this is the large molecule model, right? Simulating a... It's a, it's a... It's a larger one so if you look at the um the, the three benchmarks published by by the max Planck, um this is the the medium one there is even a larger one that that is a scale out version wharf yeah you see the improvements here um so wharf uh stresses a couple of things wharf has uh, different phases and one of the phases actually stresses the vector performance and the other phase it actually does also stress the uh, the memory bandwidth, um, Wharf is uh, always hard on the network and actually hard on the disk as well. That's why that's, that's why simulation always sucks. <laughs> that's why weather simulations is one of the hardest things to do. Yeah, because it's like yeah, bottleneck is everything, but uh, it's also why this is very a great use case for us to uh, to show what an instance can actually do and can actually deliver on performance. Because if it can do right. weather, exactly. then can do a lot. Basically, the fact that we're seeing such such sort of very straight lines here means that that we've got a well balanced system, great vector performance. That's what's led to that orange line just looking so much better than the blue line. But the straightness of it is really just a is a testimony to EFA, I would guess. Yeah, yeah, we see improvements. I mean, the new uh, new EFA improvements on uh, Graviton three. Uh, where we are seeing double the bandwidth that we had on uh, on Graviton 2 and a whole lot of tons of tiny little um, uh, performance improvements here and there. I mean, this is silicon that we build ourselves. We, build, we make the software ourselves, so we are constantly improving. All of this is standard open source code. You're running inside a Linux environment um, using off-the-shelf Linux compilers, libfabric and open MPI straight off the shelf, open software, open standards. Um, and no, like nobody's had to actually modify Wharf to get it to run on this, this, on, on this configuration, right? There is nothing at all specific that you have to do to have it running on AWS. I mean, of course, there are slight differences going uh, from uh, different CPU architectures, of course, right? So that's what people had done in the past is like, how do we run warp on an, on an ARM system that, but if you have it ported to a standard ARM system, you can just recompile and run it here. If you're enjoying these videos, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that we can keep making more to help you understand how the cloud works and to show you new ways to help all the scientists and engineers around you who use HPC every day to do amazing things. It's what gets us motivated as well. See you next time.